Hi everybody, and we're back again with this image again, this time with Brian's logic again. And after yesterday's video where I told him where he went wrong, he decided to revisit his new favorite tool, GeoGebra, and this time he puts the line down on top of Blackpool Tower. I wonder what that could show. Will it be enough? to bring him back to the globe? That is the question. Will his calculations be able to bring him back from the abyss? Let's see. Now, I want you to pay attention to this image right here, right now. I want you to take a look at Blackpool Tower and the mountain directly behind it, the peak directly behind it, to just to the right-hand side of it, is called Dowcrag. Now then, you can see that Blackpool Tower is much bigger than Dowcrag. You can visually see that. And you know that Dowcrag is obviously far smaller. It's going to pay... This is going to play out in Brian's own calculations. And we're really going to see the mindset of the Flurf right now. Now, I'm going to put myself in the corner. I'm going to play Brian's video. Let's see what he's got to say this time. This is what we're dealing with, right? <clears throat> so, I've done enough waffling on now <clears throat> for, for, for the moment. Um, yes, you have, and just bearing in mind the first six minutes of this is Brian just waffling, and if you know what Brian's like, you'll understand that a waffle is definitely a waffle. Here we go. I'm just going to go through this, right? Here is an observer, six metres, right? I'm going to show, right, this observer... <clears throat> right, sorry. This observer is observing, let me go out a bit, right, Blackpool Tower. And their line of sight, let's go right in, their line of sight is hitting the top of Blackpool Tower. They're not. Perfect. That's exactly what we asked you to do yesterday. It's exactly what I asked you to do. It's exactly what the rest of the community have been asking you to do. Put the line on the tower. Looking over it. They're hitting the top of Blackpool Tower, so they're not able to see. It's just under the top, I suppose, yeah. Just under the top. They're hitting the top. They can't see through that, let's just say, but they're just using that as their line of sight, right? So their, their line of sight is lower than Blackpool Tower, right? So then we come out to here. Sorry about it. Scroll out and scroll back in because there's a... Now pay attention to the trickery that Brian's going to do right now. So he's literally giving you the observer position. He showed you the line of sight going through the top of the tower now we're at seven minutes and 10 seconds now and we're just about to zoom in and hopefully you would imagine that based upon these things the next logical line of reasoning to show his audience would be to show where that line hits the mountain but he's not going to show that right now what, <laughs> what he's going to do is going to distract you with other things to talk about <laughs> typical flurf Yeah, no. yeah. Keep away from keep away from showing where that line of sight hits. Definitely. Let's talk about something else. Here we go. No, <clears throat> just to show, right? Right. <laughs> the distance to Dale Craig is oh. eighty-three thousand six hundred eighty-five point eight 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 meters. Its size is 778 meters. It's actually less than that. It's not 778 meters. But I don't care. I just give it that for the moment. So that gives it a 0 0.5 3266 degree angular size. Right? The distance from the observer to the tower, um, to the to the tower, sorry. Yeah, sorry. To the <laughs> no, pay attention to this. This is this is hilarious. Brian literally has these sizes on the screen. He's worked them out for himself. He's put the distances in in meters. He's put the size in in meters. So he's going to get an accurate result. And he's figured out that this here, 0 0.5326 degrees, should be the height of Dow Crag. That's the small amounting in the, in the distance, right? It should be 0 0.53. Yeah, sorry. To the tower is... And now he's done the tower calculations and he's figured out that it should be 0 0.46 <laughs> so he's worked this out so he knows that 
from his position on a flat plane, just on pure angular size, he can look at the mountain in the tower and establish that on a flat plane, the mountain should be far, far bigger than the tower. And before we get into this one, I just want to show this image again because look at this. His own calculations. The mountain, the mountain should be 0 0.53 degrees and the tower should be 0 0.46 degrees on his flat earth. Unfortunately, we know that half of that mountain is gone. We know half of the mountain is gone because we know the trough here. We know all the places that we're seeing this mountain and we know that the bottom of the mountain is way, way lower than the tower. In fact, there's about the same amount of mountain missing as what we can actually see. It's incredible to, to know that he's figuring this out with mathematics and still remain a fleur. It's 19,312.128 uh, meters and its size is 158 meters. The tower is actually slightly big, slightly, slightly higher than that off of, it's a few meters higher than that actually off of uh, sea level, but it don't matter. Right, just give it that, right? And its angular size is 0 0.46876. So here we have, right? <laughs> yes, here we have it. This is what it should look like. The pink, the pink arrow, the pink arrow here should be the size of the mountain. And the, the purple square, uh, sorry, cross that you've put on here, the purple cross should be the size as viewed through the camera of Blackpool Tower. And it's not. This here is what we see <laughs> the other way around. Why is that? Why is half the mountain missing, Brian? Dale Craig, 0 0.53266 uh, degrees. Blackpool Tower, angular size, 0 0.47, sorry, 46876 degrees. So, Technically, from here... Technically, you've proved the globe. That's it. It's game over. You've literally just done the calculations for yourself. I think the only thing to wrap this up, and we've still got, for whatever reason, the title of this video is called Orthographic Angular Size Kills the Globe Gang. And we're eight minutes in. He's proved the globe already with angular size. He's put the line of sight through the top of the tower, which was still to see. And apparently we still have another 14 minutes left of this. So I don't know what kind of flurf mathematics he's going to try and come up with. But the maths don't lie. It's literally spelled out for you right here. Here, now, I've kind of given this a bit more. It's not as much as this. Like, the, the, these two should be closer together. This uh, triangle should be closer to this uh, cross, uh, as far as angular size goes, because... The difference in angular size between the two of them is 0 0.0639. So the uh, hu the resolution limit of the human eye is 0 0.02. So there's only a very small change in angular size. What in the world does that have to do? You have no idea what the angular resolution of the human eye has in relation to this particular photograph. Seriously, it has no bearing whatsoever. Zero bearing. What it's saying is that you cannot see a mouse on Dow Crag. You cannot see an ant on Blackpool Tower. That is what the human resolution of the human eye means. That has nothing to do whatsoever. Zilch! With these comparisons, side by side. If you take a picture of a six-foot human stood next to a five-foot human, it doesn't matter where you take that picture from. Unless it gets too far away and it's too pixelated and it's just a few pixels. But this isn't pixels. This is not pixels. We're not talking pixels here. We're talking beautiful photography. And it wasn't taken with a crappy picture with low resolution. This is a high definition photograph. We can definitely see that the six foot human that is Blackpool Tower and the five foot human which is Dow Crag are in equal. You can see exactly where they are. There's no difference between this. You know, this, this idea that 0 0.02 degrees of the human eye will make it close. Oh, it just oh, it boggles my mind. You've just done the math, Brian. You've just done the math. You've just figured this out. You've just worked it out. Don't, don't go too far. Don't, don't push yourself. Just accept the results.
to accept it. Size between those two things. Right, so our opposition would have at one time tried to make it out as if there was this massive side. There isn't. There's a very, very small, um, very, very small amount of angular size change um, uh, between the two of them, right? But that's not the point. <clears throat> the point is this, right? You saw where that angle line was going. It was below. Now, this purple well, cross angle. here, this purple is the line. exact same height as the tower. Yes, and it's all fluff. It's all nonsense. What you've just said then is just a distraction. Just show us where the damn line hits the mountain. This is the height of the tower. And I've risen this up, this Del Craig uh, uh, triangle up a little bit, right? Uh, to give it even a greater angular size. So if you were to do an angular size between this blue dot up to this cross um, and this blue dot up up to this, this, uh, this triangle up here, then the angular size will be a lot greater for it up to the triangle than it is up to the purple cross. But see, the, the thing about it is, is this, right? I've extenuated it. I, I think that's the right way to describe it. I've extenuated it on purpose because here is the angle line, right? Here. Can you actually just show us the angle line? Go do it properly. Center the image so that we can see and your audience can see where the line intersects the mountain, please. Here is your angle line. So you might have my cat in the background. She won't show up. So here is the angle line. Keep right? going up. And that was going below. Um, that what? was below Why won't uh, you show the, top, the, of the top of the tower. And the point I'm making is. <clears throat> the point that you're making is that you're still on screen right now. You are not showing where the top of the mountain is. You're showing that it's touching the mountain, but you're not showing how far or how much of the mountain is still above that line. You are refusing to show the information to your audience. You're just saying, yeah, it kind of touches the mountain. But you're not going to show us in detail. If we take angular size change into account, right, the angle the viewer has going above the top of the tower, right? If there, because it... You know what? I, I, I have not watched past this part, literally. I decided to record this video. I've seen 10 minutes in and I'm like, he's just proved the globe. I, I don't see where this could possibly go in any way, shape or form that can bring it back to a, a, a flat earth proof at all. And bearing in mind that he did actually, at some point in that, show you very reluctantly where the top of that mountain was. And I'm going to have to pause it so that you can see because he's very slick in doing this because he doesn't really want you to see this. There we go. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to stop that there. And he's actually, I mean, obviously we've got the, um, the top of the mountain way up here. And then we've got the line of sight through the top of the tower here. So there would be substantial mountain above the line of sight to the top of Blackpool Tower on a plane. And let's go back to the image and let's transition that across. So yeah, so as you can see where the top of the, the very top of that mount uh, of the tower is, Behind that, you should see mountain. You should see mountain and substantially part of the mountain above it. He's saying this. He's literally showing it on screen right now. Let me just flick between these two so that you can see. Look, he's showing that. But he, he doesn't show it to his audience. He briefly, for a second or two, allows this to slip onto screen. But he doesn't show it you past that or go into any analysis. Now, he's saying that this title of the video is Orthographic Angular Size Kills Blackpool Globe Gang. Right? But he's literally just spent the last four minutes explaining how it doesn't work on a flat plane. He showed the angular size calculations that prove that the image doesn't match up to his belief of what you would see on a flat plane. He's run the line of sight through the tower to the mountain to show where it should be on a flat plane. And again, it still doesn't match up. So there's no mathematics that can bring this back. There's no I was going to swear then, and I shouldn't really swear because uh, that will get me channel, not my channel, me video demonetized. I don't want to do that. I want to make money on YouTube. I don't want to lose money and do all this work for nothing. So I'm not going to swear, but let's say bull something. And he is definitely bull something here. And whatever it's going to be for the next 12 minutes, guys, if you want to go over and listen to that, that's entirely up to you. But as far as I'm concerned right now, I could stop this video because... He's just proved the globe, literally. He's just worked it out. Everything that we did a year ago and went through, he's finally got it. He's finally done it. He's finally figured it out. I'm assuming that this remaining 12 minutes is 
<laughs> is likely to be him trying to salvage the situation and still still have it working as a flat earth proof anyway um back on with the trial today again if you're interested in the amber heard versus johnny depp trial please tune in it's going to get extremely juicy this week i cannot tell you how much is going to come out i've been following this for well over a year i'm incredibly clued up on it it's incredible to watch it's really interesting it's not just celebrities it has a whole plethora of uh things running through it there's a whole myriad of things running through this with a lot of people involved elon musk uh the acl aclu chla um warner brothers are coming on the stand everybody's being pulled in the, the faked photographs everything it's all coming out please tune in please support me please follow me over that please help uh, a small youtube channel compete with these bigger ones and get a decent audience in there i really really would appreciate it anyway that'll do for now and i'll see you all in the very next video take care